Hello, welcome to Counterpoint Conversations. I'm Neil. I'm here in Singapore at the Docs APAC Analyst Summit. And I have with me uh, uh, Ofer Daniel. Hi. He heads product marketing for Gen AI platforms. And great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. So we are, we have, we are here at Amdocs Analyst event and it's been a revelation in terms of what Amdocs has been doing with respect to uh, digital transforming the telco space. And every year we have seen right from eSIM to orchestration of eSIM to almost BSS, OSS, digital transformation, how Amdocs has been leading the space. But now at this event, we have been briefed about what the new initiatives Amdocs has been doing with respect to integrating Gen AI. And that is a hot buzzword, but right now what we have been uh, briefed about is uh, the real applications for telcos and how Amdocs is integrating with different partners and building newer use cases and helping them save costs as well as make money. So I'll hand it over to Ophir. Yeah. <laughs> and if you can talk to me about uh, Gen AI has been here in the industry for almost uh, a year or so when the buzzword started, though there has been pre-work which has been done. But uh, in just one year, how have you realigned your strategy to help telcos with this, enabling this new technology? Uh, thank you. Hit on the, the right term, realign the strategy, because that's what we did. And when we realized that this is not going to be another trend, I mean, we've been in this uh, market for almost 40 years and we have seen many things come and go. Uh, but this technology has a different sense, a different notion to it. And it's not something that is coming just to, you know, to be a brief. It's an evolution of something that started a few decades ago around AI, went to machine learning and deep learning. And Gen AI is really an accelerator to many processes that we do in our daily lives. And of course, as such, also the enterprises like uh, telecommunication companies and CSPs that we operate for. We actually started to jump on the boat very quickly. And we did two main activities around this technology. One, we embraced it internally as an organization. So I'm a marketeer, as you said. Right. And I've been um, you know, nominated with tools around this um, technology like GPTs and uh, creators like MidJourney and others to help me create content, help me create visuals, help wow. me create articles. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started to embrace the technology and not only me, but the company on a, on a level of that every organization needed to see how uh, they can be more productive with it. Mm -hmm. In parallel to this, we started a journey to explore what this means to our, to our customers, to the telcos, mm -hmm. to the CSPs. And we, we saw that there is, a, we, we, we analyzed like 600 ideas and mapped them over to 120 use cases, over seven domains. Mm -hmm. And we understood that there is a lot, there is a very high impact, especially starting with uh, the care and the sales. Mm -hmm. These are the most impactful domains. But the maturity level, of course, wasn't high. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really clear what, how can they connect the technology to the business mm -hmm. domains and R&DT. And along with the product teams have been uh, working together to create uh, some solution in that sense. Uh, and we came up with a, a strategy and also a, a development of a platform called Amaze. Amaze. Yeah, we play with the AI the team. Name. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Just like the amazing and the, you know, the, the logo of Amdoc. So a, Amaze with the capital AI. The idea behind that was to say that we are building a platform which is scalable for telcos and bringing the GPTs to the telco domain. And yeah, this is uh, what we came up with, what we invested a lot in the last uh, 10, 12 months. So you said care and sales are the top business units within telco, which would be like most impacted mm -hmm. with uh, Gen AI in positive way, right? So can you talk a bit about some use cases which you're targeting uh, with respect to care? Absolutely, especially? absolutely. So because we have been... Um, you know, discussing with customers and dealing with customers, we understand from an analysis that we have done throughout the course of time, not only the last one year, what are the, the main jobs to be done by care agents? Do they need to sell promotions uh, of a new, uh, you know, new uh, offers that come out and promote it and make sure that the customers have the right uh, value uh, from the service provider? 
Do they need to deal with questions that are associated to, you know, the less payment, the data usage, their bills? People want to save on bills. People want to understand bills. People want to compare bills. Right. And those were very typical day jobs that they had to come by. And, and, and honestly, they had to spend sometimes 10, 12 minutes with folks on the line, which is, you know, not a good thing for both sides, right? Like the service provider spends a lot of money on the resources that need to be trained and skilled yeah. and accommodate all those complex questions. And then the users, on the other hand, would like like maybe an ideal like one line interface just to ask a question and get it yeah. instead of spending 10 minutes uh, on the other side on the call. And that's the situations today that yeah. most service providers face. Now, since this can come as a chat or as an interaction between one user to another, it would make sense mm. for us to harness all the data that underlies the systems of mm. billing and billing care and bring that bubble those data points up to the care agents and provide them with an adequate way to create something more, uh, let's call it precise and substantial. Mm. And that's, uh, that's where we invested in initially. So I think that use case you talked about the care, I think it's going to be revolutionary considering amount of time and money and effort which Correct. has been uh, so, and if you have just single interface which can uh, compare all the with, with respect to AI they can compare all the history of the users and they can exactly pinpoint if they have a bill shock uh, where exactly the issue is and if it can be it can also go one step ahead and give a resolution I think that would be icing on the cake right? Absolutely. yes so when you talk about care, there's a clear use case and I think it's already in works, right? What about from sales point of view? How yeah. can operators, CSPs monetize? So you have two kinds of sales that are relevant uh, for CSPs. One is to consumer, the other one is to enterprise, right? So when you have a promotion to a consumer and the consumer, you know, might give a call to ask what's relevant here or, you know, maybe had like a phone that is currently having issues and he wants to upgrade to a new phone. That's the time that you want to provide to the consumer the actual reasons that are most beneficial for the individual to upgrade or to change to a new plan. Because, you know, if you're going to read a script and it's going to sound the same all the time, then your sales uh, engagement is going to be less hmm. than uh, ideal. With this technology in place, you know, with using a maze and accessing the LLMs as a language model and try to get relevant answers due to the fact that we bind the data sets from the LLM to the business elements of CSP, we're able to provide the reasons based on the profile. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example. If a person travels a lot and he has roaming packages and this new package now has a better engagement of roaming for that individual, mm -hmm. along with streaming services and along with new data plans and a, and a capability to upgrade your phone. I mean, bundles usually come with many of features and perks. But you want to talk about the first perk relevant for that guy that roams. Mm. And for the other individual, you want to talk about maybe a better data plan. So different profiles that are still going to be sold the same plan have different reasons mm. and intents to buy it. Amaze will help you discover the agent mm. and the individual eventually discover the relevant reasons mm. for the upgrade, for the change of the plan and to sell better to consumers. So, And also if you have an objection reason, because maybe the cost is high for you mm -hmm. uh, or the plan, the plan is not adequate, then you can continue to converse through the LLM with natural language and get mm -hmm. relevant answers that help you. By the way, same on the, the enterprise. Interest. The sales agent, the B2B sales agent, faces a lot of challenges today. Mm. And instead of focusing on the cell, it needs to focus on the software to inject all the parameters and you know, find the duration of the project, the cost, the hardware, the software, the number of uh, CPEs, the number mm. of... And it's very difficult to come up with an adequate proposal. And even once it is there, you need to create a meeting and send documentation. Mm -hmm. This entire process takes usually between 40 to 50 days at minimum. Mm. And with Gen AI in place, we found that we're able to accelerate that to one, two weeks. A, because you're able to harness many parameters coming from many, you know, data sets and systems that are relevant to create a relevant proposal and put it all together and come up with a much better, much more adequate. Also, you can fine tune. GPTs are here to work hard for you. Right. So you can get a first uh, response of a B2B proposal, which might not be relevant or might not be the best accurate. 
By using a maze, you can continue to converse and inject more information on what you want to get out of this proposal mm -hmm. and fine tune it. So we use right. uh, algorithms and evaluation mechanisms over a few LLMs mm -hmm. to make sure we get something very, very precise. Mm -hmm. And that fine tuning process results in a very good B2B proposal, including the presentation, the documentation, yeah. the, the, and anything else associated to it, which is a lot of work, you can actually generate it. Right. That's fantastic. So yesterday I mentioned there are different layers where you are integrating Gen AI. One is customer experience platform, then right. BSS you talked about, and OSS as well. Right, right? network OSS. And yeah. data intelligence layer as well. Correct. Right? So can you briefly talk about on network side of things also, I think you are helping out telcos with Gen AI. Can you talk about that? Right. On the network, we have two main use cases that we're focused on today. One is around the end-to-end -end service orchestration, and the other one is around the inventory management. Hmm. So from design to managing the, uh, uh, the, the service itself and making sure the assurance is in place, we have many systems there, and we want the designer to be able to pick up the relevant and best creation of the network per the topology that is available to the service provider, and that helping them with what we call the copilot, the network copilot, hmm. always as copilot, and copilot to assist in the creation of the relevant topology for the network. And then, of course, when something happens on the network, to try to pinpoint the problem, mm. again, takes a lot of factors and parameters. Mm. By using Gen AI in the copilot of the network, we're able to assist the person which is taking care of the service to pinpoint the problem and handle the situation by understanding what happened in the last 24, 48, two, three hours, and giving that information back to the user you know, for the analysis. So we, you talked about co-pilots, right? And uh, there's a amazing co-pilot branding. And that is in partnership with Microsoft, Correct. especially in the customer experience platform. Correct. Right. So can you briefly talk about that? And also you had a very interesting slide from co-pilot to autopilot. Right. And you, if you can end with, yeah. end your comment with how operators can go from co-pilot to autopilot. Sure. So let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. One, the Amaze Copilot is a copilot of its own. Mm. It's built on property of Amaze with our IP and now a software that we developed and that's relevant for the telcos over the OSS and BSS ecosystems and network. The Microsoft Copilot is there also on its own. It's an independent software piece. When it appears in the software integrated to the Amdoc software, which is the CEP that you mm. mentioned, the customer experience platform with Microsoft Dynamics, then it's verticalized for telcos. So at some situations, we're going to use the Amaze Copilot mm. when we are interacting with the Amdoc systems in the CEP. But when we're interacting with the Microsoft systems in the CEP, we're going to use the verticalized version of the Microsoft Copilot. So that Microsoft Copilot has also been trained to understand the telecom glossary and the taxonomy. Mm. Those two work in sync over the CEP to make the best out of those two copilots. So actually, have two copilots and you are still the pilot. When we talk about the autopilot, the transition, this is where we want to go to be able to achieve a level that is able to not only understand the inference of the user, whether it's enterprise any, or any other system uh, or consumer, and be able to route it to the relevant AI agent that we have in Amaze and provide an answer. So taking the entire loop from the question that can be associated to any domain in the service uh, provider ecosystem, being able to write it to the relevant AI agent that we have over every domain and you know, process it through a maze to the relevant LLMs and get a response back uh, to the end user or uh, enterprise. And as such, you're actually closing the loop mm -hmm. of going beyond the augmentation and the upskilling of human beings, but you're able to maybe do work that... You usually had to take maybe a large workforce to do, and maybe you can now do it with more effective more ways uh, throughout the technology. So, yeah, and other right. and people can maybe focus on other and new you know, development items, right? So, this actually makes your your organization more productive. That's great. And on the last part, when will operators go from co-pilot to autopilot? Will Gen AI enable that? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> operators are still in the stage of testing copilot. <laughs> so, needless to say, about autopilot, we will take time. Yeah. We will take time. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, we're taking this. Uh, Step by step together yeah. with our clients. They want to talk about, we want to talk about the low hanging fruits, which is current sales yeah. for consumers for now. And then we'll come network and OSS. And as time goes by, we will get there. It will take yeah. time.
That's brilliant. That's amazing, actually. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very that. much for joining it. us and explaining the detail what Amdocs is doing in Absolutely. AI space. Absolutely. And I think this is a strong wave of Gen AI coming. It's disrupting telco. It's not just a buzzword anymore. Right. It's here to stay. It's here to stay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Pleasure. Thank you very much.